Hi, it's Vaughan at Westcote Bell Pottery in Nova Scotia, um, so westcotebellpottery.ca. Um, I made the platters and the frames, and uh, you've probably seen the videos of those already. Uh, so I figured I should only show you, to be fair, how I glaze them as well. Um, although there was a snippet in the frame video of me glazing a frame. Um, but I've got some big frames to glaze and I've got seven large platters from the video. So I have laid out um, a whole bunch of glazes. Let's see if I can get you down there. So you just lost me, but that's not important. So I have uh, nine glazes and I've got uh, seven platters and I'm going to try and make it so that they're a little bit different each time, but you know, it's not uh, important to me if some of them look very much the same, uh, but I try to be different. I don't try to be consistent in my pottery. I like to have variation. So, um, so I have got lots of little cups uh, that I'm going to be pouring glazes because I can't dip, except for one color, I can't dip these platters. I've got to pour, uh, or I could sponge, which I might do a little bit of too. Um, so the first thing I do, and if you haven't done this to your own glazes, if you only have small amounts, you can't anyway, but I mix all my glazes with a paint stirrer. So I'll turn the volume down now so you can sort of not be totally blown away by this, but anyway. So my drill is hanging on the wall there for me to do, be able to mix things quickly. I and went from light colors to dark, so I didn't have to wash the drill out every time. So starting with my oatmeals, and then moving over onto the yellows, and then the greens, and then the grays, and then the blue. So I didn't contaminate my light color glazes uh, with the paint, although there's so little left on the drill because it's spinning. It probably doesn't anyway, but I, don't, I like to make sure my light color glazes don't get blue in them. So anyway, that's a, a drill and it's nice to have an extension cord in the ceiling so that it comes down so I can move it around the glaze area anywhere I want. Uh, so that's a good thing to do if you haven't done it already. Um, so I am now going to do these and I'll speed up the rest, but I'm going to do one so you can see and I'll explain what I'm doing. Um, and that way. Okay, I've moved my buckets along a bit so you can see a bit easier. So we'll go with the first one again. So what was that? I did oatmeal first. Straight one of this, so I want them to be a little different, remember? And then we did the greys. Bit. Just keep your fingers clean so you don't want to get glazed fingerprints on your piece. And then the variegated blue here, so that was the mouse gray there. Kitchen. And I'm moving to the greens. Making sure that finger that's not glazed on it didn't touch it that, that, that time. Next green. Wipe my finger again this time. So 
but you don't need lots of glaze to get a glaze like this. You just have little pipe containers that are pouring it away. Now if you're going to go to the beach, what is that creamy yellow that I have? Keep my finger away from the piece because I have some glaze on this forefinger there. Finally, the blue. I'm wiping my finger again. I have another sponge here that I can use. Make sure there's no glaze on my hand. And I'm going to turn it over. The glaze dries so quick. And then I'm just doing the, the outside rim. Wipe my finger again because I have to touch it. You better be careful because it might splash up from underneath too, which I think it did then. Yep, I got a splash on this one. I'll have to rub out. I see it just splashed up at three four little dots there. I can rub those out. So there you go, another one of those. And uh, I think I've got to do, I'm going to do some sponges on these as well. So next I'm going to speed this up so you can see all the rest done in fast motion. I just think that you've got to be careful of drips, splashes and things like that and keeping your hand clean with sponges uh, if you're going to do glazing, but you don't need masses of glazes to do something like that. You could just have a couple of pints or something, you know, you're just pouring into a dish basically. I'm going to unpack a kiln, but it's uh, just going to be highlights because it's a lot of rep repetition because I, I just had to make an order of 70 mugs for somebody, so it's mostly mugs. This one is using that um, matte turquoise. I got this off Pinterest. Uh, with my uh, yellow oatmeal over the top of my blue-green copper red glaze, which in oxidation obviously comes out turquoise. But that's a nice color combination. I have never done that one before. Uh, but I guess I will be again because I like it. So, uh, But that's a nice combination too with my Maggie Jerk green and my yellow oatmeal. So that's very pretty. And then... Here's the, wow, I've got a lot of new glazes in here that I haven't done before. That one is a new one too with my uh, oatmeal and variegated blue over that matte turquoise glaze. So that's a good one. I actually had two matte turquoises. Val Cushing was one of them. Um, and then I also had a different one. I can't remember. I mixed the two together. And I don't use it on uh, insides of things because I'm not sure about its food safety, but it's a fairly glossy glass glaze, so I would think it's fine. Um, but look at that. That's a pretty glazed piece. Here's my classic one, Tenmaku Gold, with variegated blue and oatmeal. Loads of people have ordered that mug from me or from the videos, but they usually have fluting in them. This one doesn't, but that's nice without the fluting too. This one is the same as the first one out. So um, I probably did six of each one. That is very pretty. I like that. It has that landscape look to it, which I do. If you've seen my other videos, I do a lot of cove series where it's the hillside meeting the ocean. Anything different now? And then we've got another classic bright blue with variegated blue and oatmeal over it. So that one's very nice. These are, these are all for orders, except for the fluted ones. I keep those ones for myself, and this is the fluted version. 
So fl the fluting takes a bit longer to do, so um, I don't use it as in my wholesale orders. But, um, but it's a really nice version. I like that one too. I think that's all the variations. Here's a, uh, that one. Look how close that got to the bottom. Lucky. I didn't even fire that on the stilt. I was lucky. I should buy a lottery ticket. But anyway, that's a really nice little T-ball. There should be six of these as well. And the rest of this level is all the same as those. Okay, here we go with level two. There's three layers in here. So in this layer, uh, I took one of these out in the other layer. This is the yellow oatmeals, sort of creamy oatmeal with a yellow oatmeal, and then the actual apple green on the bottom. So, um, so that's a really nice summer version of that mug. Here you go. I've got my pieces lined up on the kiln over there, so it will be less stressful. There we go. Otherwise, I'll be able to do my Alfred Hitchcock movie music. Anyway, this is really pretty. I like that. This is a summer mug. Now there, there's three stilt marks on the bottom of each one, um, so um, so basically that just needs to be ground off. Another one of those. Here, oh, I really like this one. This is my classic. This is the Tembaku Gold with variegated blue and oatmeal, but that one turned out really nice. There should be. About 12 of these, because I've been selling them really well uh, in the gallery too, but a lot of people have been ordering these from the internet, so let's put that one there again for a minute. See how many of these, and if it's consistent. Oh, well that's very nice. There's less blue in this one, but the runs are really nice all the way down. So um, maybe I should thicken up the variegated blue. I'm always changing that variegated blue. That one's got more blue in it. So I think I just needed to add a bit more blue, but the more blue you get, more running. This is perfect running, and the, and the way I did this is cooled it from 22, 23, peak temperature, held for 15 minutes, and then cooled it at 400 degrees an hour, down to 2,000, and then slow cooled it at 140 from, from 2,000 to 1750, and held for 30 minutes. So, but that's how that, and see the yellow in the Tenmaku? <laughs> Gold is gold. It turned out really gold. Sometimes that goes completely amber and it breaks to black like this. That's really nice. So all three of those are the same, but they're different. Let's see, I'll tip you up so you can see, still see them. I like to let you see them when they're on the edge there, in case you're thinking about one. But um, there's another one of those. This is my most popular selling coffee mug. Anything different? These ones we haven't taken out of this kiln yet. This is my dark blue with the variegated blue and oatmeal over it. So that's very pretty too. And there's, I think there should be six of each of these colors. And then here's my beach mug. It's the beach with the ocean. Blue, green, copper, red, which I found on Pinterest, and then also, um, or was it, yeah, it was Pinterest, I think, of that one, uh, with my oat yellow oatmeals over the top. And yellow oatmeal, you just add yellow stain to your oatmeal. What else do we have? It's one of the Tamiku gold with the variegated blue and oatmeal without the fluting. See how I've now controlled the dribbles on the handle area? Because if you see earlier videos, you'll see we had a lot of runs on the handles from this glaze combination. So that my new, Firing Pro 4 file is right on. I get runs without dribbling off the bottom. This one's really pretty too. The Tenriku Gold is flecking to gold in that one as well. But in this one, it's unique because it's just all yellow. So what did I, it's on the same shelf. Maybe it was a bit thicker, I don't know. Here you go, there's the little run. Didn't get down there, but look how long those runs are. So this firing profile is right on. Anything different? Now this one looks to me, yeah, there's a few pinholes in that place, but they're not rough, but it's definitely a few pinholes. And this was, I think this is the old apple green with the um, matte turquoise and where they overlap, looks like it's got a few pinholes there. Strange, but, um, 
there you go. It's a, it's a, it's an olive green mug, not my favourite. I have an olive green glaze, and I have about five gallons of it. <laughs> it's not my favourite. Uh, and this one did run on the bottom. That's what I was saying with the chemical gold. That sometimes, yeah, that one has a little rug which I can go knock off very easily. But the pinholes, they're not sharp, so that's good. Anything different? No, there's the blue again. This is my other dark blue. Um, so I have two dark blues. This one's not as nice as the other, but you wouldn't know the difference if you didn't. Know. Well, actually, let me show you. There is a bit of a difference. This one's much brighter. But, um, and the rest are duplicates of the what's I've already taken out. Okay, the third and final layer. So there's a few different things in here. I had some leftover planters from a previous group of firings I did. And this is a teapot that I've had hanging around in the studio that I didn't like, uh, and now I like it. Yeah, that, that turned out nice. It's got some nice, that, look at that, that's a nice run. Good, you've got the fluting lines. It was pretty boring before, now it's, it's alive. It's alive. There you go. Nice teapot now. It's worth refiring things sometimes, not always. But, um, and there's a, another one of those, so I actually have four of those then. Because I thought I had five, six, but... Uh, so yeah, these are pretty much duplicates of the rest that I think you've seen. That's on speckled clay there, but that's uh, a very nice one. Uh, yep, we're all pretty duplicating now. I think this, the, the, the nice thing in this firing is that I really like the oatmeals and the turquoise, blue, green, copper, red, over the matte turquoise. And that has a nice look to that mug. Because I like my landscape mugs. I live on the ocean and I like to have things that kind of remind me of that. But, um, so I'm going to write that one now. Here's the same glaze combination, I think. Yeah, it is. Got the yellow oatmeal up there. Same glaze combination over uh, the white clay, the smooth clay. So here you go. The white porcelain clay and the speckled clay um, has a different look altogether. Very nice, though. What's the other side like? Oh, it's a longer run. Here's my little tiny kiln. It's the same overflow of mugs that I had in the other kiln. Okay, it's been a lot of repeat pieces in here because this is a big order, um, but this was a pitcher. I, nobody had ordered this one. This was just made. And that's pretty. Dark blue, variegated blue with oatmeal and then my black matte turquoise on the bottom. That sort of makes it pop. Um, another one of the dark blue mugs. And another one of those. So that kind of pops when you put the light green on the bottom. Oh, a little bit of glaze came off there. Uh, it shivered off by the look of it. I have to reglaze that one. Uh, well, maybe it got knocked as it went down in the kiln, I guess. And this, I think this is my favorite combination in all these firings, actually. A very summery mug. And then I have a bunch of tea bowls that say that these worked. Oh, look how that yellow is uh, chemical gold. It went totally matte yellow. 
and in the same firing as the other pieces where it didn't. But this is on the bottom, so maybe the elements at the bottom of this kiln are doing a little bit less successful, and the blue faded out completely. I bet this is cooler on the bottom and all that, so, uh, so it didn't quite reach up to the same temperature as the top. There's some nice turquoise ones there. I have a little set that these needed to go with. Nothing else on but blue, green, copper, red. The turquoise. Okay, this is the other kiln, um, and I have a bunch of refires here. So let's see whether any of them stuck to the kiln. So these have been hanging around my studio for a long time. Uh, I made these at least two years ago, um, and uh, I needed to refire them, so they've been stuck waiting in line, never getting in the kiln. But look at that. This was just a black vase. I put my oatmeal over the top of it, even though it got glaze already fired on it. Uh, I dipped it, thickened up my oatmeal with some glaze thickener, which is basically um, uh, Epsom salts thickens the glaze. Uh, and, uh, and this time it's turned out very nice. Just a little of the oatmeal. Um, they were really ugly pots before. <laughs> this one's not as good, but you know. I think that's not that's an improvement on what it was. It was just a blue vase, but the oatmeal seems to have soaked in quite a bit um, and uh, didn't settle on the surface as much. It was just in that upper part, I think. I'm not sure it really soaked in down there, but um, uh, the other three seem to have done the same as the first one. So this one is very pretty up there as well. Just, it, it, I think I did two or three dips because it never settles, you know, very thickly when you dip over glaze, shiny glaze. Um, but I added like two dips or three dips, I can't remember which, but it built up the oatmeal enough so we give ourselves a little extra kind of interest. And um, so it's not a bad vase at this point. It's now saleable at least. <laughs> yeah, what, you know, the right customer has to come right by for every piece you make. That one's nice. Yeah, that one, that one turned out quite nice. Uh, I'm not sure, it looks like it did something unusual there, but it's it's, it's glazed over, but uh, anyway, that one turned out good too. So thick oatmeal. If you've got a pot that doesn't look so good, put some thick oatmeal over it. <laughs> Nobody knows. I mean, there's so many things that can happen in a firing when you start playing around like this. No control, just a bit of instinct i think you have to, after you've done it a long time you get some instincts for what might work i think i might have shown you these earlier in the video but i think this one which way around was this was supposed to it can go either way can't it but that was one of those ones i dipped in the video um so that's a nice one And here's one that had the oatmeal in the sky. That was at the folk art white with oatmeal up there. That one turned out very nice. Yeah, so really nice. I'll have a nice display. Of I think it's when people see a lot of something, they respond better, I think. That one's nice too. I did these slightly different in, as you, well, you couldn't tell because I speeded up the video, but I was dipping slightly different to try and make sure they all look a little different. These are about 140 degrees Fahrenheit I'm lifting out of the can, so it feels like hot bath, hot bath water. Yeah, I think these are nice. Put six of these in a, I think I have seven altogether actually, in a display. It'll be a nice display. Oh, this is, I remember doing this one differently. That is a happy platter. Yeah, that's very happy. I thought, I was trying to think how, <laughs> looking, maybe thinking you as a, as a bird and you're above the thing and you've got the ocean in the top and the, on either side and you're flying around in this area here. This is the sky in the center, basically. I was just thinking of trying one with differently. And um, whether it responds to a landscape, I don't know, um, but it's a happy platter. Yellow always makes things happy. Oh, this one's nice. I think this is my favorite. 
This one I like a lot. Trying to get the reflection out of it because I have a light shining from the side. Yeah, I like that one. There you go. So that's it. All right. I may not be posting as often as I have been. I usually post every week, but the summer's coming up and it's starting to get busy in the gallery. So it starts to get a little bit of pressure to try and uh, do everything I try to do. Um, so it may be posting every two weeks instead of every week. Um, but uh, the summer season, uh, we don't know what to expect because of COVID. Um, but um, but we, we are you know, noticing that things are getting a little bit busier. <laughs> and that's a good thing as long as we stay in our little protected plexiglass shield. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'll uh, talk to you um, in the next video. And thank you for watching all these videos. Um, we're nearly up to 8,000 subscribers, which I guess is good. And um, I don't monetize this channel, so I don't have ads on the channel, but it's, you know, I guess people make a lot of money that way. Um, so if you want a piece of pottery from a potter that you um, are watching, um, just let me know if you need one of these pieces or anything from any of the videos. Anyway, I can always remake something if I've sold it anyway. It'll be close to what the original was. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much again. So take care. Bye.